Hi everybody, I am Dr. Astush Kumar, Intervention Cardiologist, Coming Director of Physiologist, Working in Care Hospital in Hyderabad, at a position of Care Clinical Director of Cardiac Director of Physiology. Today we are here to discuss something about the heart attack and how to treat. So, as you know, heart attack is nowadays becoming common and it is not limited to the elderly patients or middle age. It is it can happen to the young patients. How you are going to know that you are having heart attack or not? So today we we will be discussing how to identify and how to make the uh, move when it happens. Coming first, what is heart disease and what are the important symptoms? Let us revise. So there are three parts. That is one is the circulatory issues, second is the muscle, the pumping issues, and third is the electrical, the electrical symptoms. Since today we are discussing regarding the circulatory issues, so circulatory issues can be due to the block in the coronary circulation or the heart the vessels which supply the heart so there is a myth, there is a always uh, a confusion regarding heart attack and cardiac arrest so before going regarding the heart attack let us differentiate what exactly is circulatory block leading to the heart attack means the patient is usually conscious and it is called heart attack or you can say myocardial infarction it is a circulatory issue when the patient is having electrical problem which can happen due to any reason it may be by birth some electrical problem or it may be circulatory issues which can lead to uh, electrical problem so when the electrical problem is dominating the whole electrical supply of the heart is gone or it is stand still and we call it as a cardiac arrest usually patient become unconscious and if he is not resuscitated by the cpr or a defibrillation the patient may die also and this is one of the cause of sudden death also so when we are talking about heart attack we are talking about the chest pains or the block and its symptoms mostly the blocks when it uh, happens it can happen in most of the blood vessels starting from the arteries and these arteries can be in any part it may be in the heart it may be in the brain it may be in the neck vein it may be in the kidney in the lower vein and the process is same the fat deposit happens it look like to be very simple but this process is very complex and it takes take it to grow and sometime it grows and burst out and block it and when it is blocking the artery we call as total occlusions so this is the uh, diagram in which you can see there is a blocks are there and this is the block which is growing when it is go it is reaching 70% or more we call as subocluted stenosis and this is called significant means this stenosis is will need stenting and if it is totally occluded we call as total occlusion and this artery should be open as early as possible if patient is in the pain now spectrum of coronary artery disease it can be of two types the stable coronary artery disease and in which the patient may be having obstruction or maybe a non obstruction i will not go into the, this detail because this is stable but acute coronary syndrome means heart attack finding means the the circulation is abruptly disrupted on a very short notice means everything was fine all of a sudden one artery is starting choking and it may be complete choking leading to a st elevation mi or it may be incomplete choking or stuttering course it may be unstable angina non stable mi so what pain should alert you to reach to the doctor so let us uh, we have a clarity regarding this one so if a pain which is on the anterior wall of the chest or you can say the front of the chest and it is more like a pressure squeezing sensation it can go on up to the jaw muscles umbilicus or it may radiate to the back neck so if this type of sensation is happening it is almost we call as a angina sometimes it may present as a indigestion and some patients take the antacids if antacid is relieving or partially relieving not, uh, not relieving or partially relieving you should be alert it may be cardiac and whenever it is associated with a profuse sweating or giddiness or that any activity which increases it it is almost a red flag sign means this type of things if you are facing it means you are having cardiac problem or it may be called say heart attack next comes what we should do so there come the decision taking and it will help you so first of all whether we are having heart attack or not 
second question whether the st elevation mi and st elevation mi is more a terminology of medical science but it means heart attack and a heart attack in which the artery is totally occluded that's why there is some ecg particular ecg will be enough to prove that yes your arteries are being totally choked and it has to be opened then question uh, the question arises whether we have to thrombolyze or primary pca it depends upon the center and where the patient is and we have to choose in this in between i will come i will come later how to choose and wherever possible the pci is option means we can say angioplasty option is there you should always choose this is the only condition in which if you are going to do the primary angioplasty the patient will be doing very good and finally time is muscle you should not waste the time in taking the decision that's why i have given this option sometimes the patient is having insurance pocket pain or cgh and the government scheme they get confused and they try to shift the patient where the cgh scheme is there or the patient is but i just want to say at this juncture if you are having heart attack it has been already been labeled you have to protect the muscles you have not to waste the time in taking the decision that you are going to shift the patient where the facilities are there for cghs or government school it is better you can if at all possible take the options of whatever basic minimum you can do at that center in the form of primary pcs and after that later on you can go for the further stabilization and treatment in the other center these are three medicines if ever if available in the home it will help a lot for the patient of heart attack that is a sorbitate aspirin and atorvastatin or prosvastatin whatever you are having and you can give up to 5 mg of tablets sublingually up to 3 tablets it may subside the pain patient may get had uh, may get headache also and sometime palpitation also but it is a very important medicine and initial hours if you are giving it may relieve the chest pain also aspirin is a blood thinner we usually give as a loading dose and disprin it comes by name of disprin 325 you can give and you can still uh, Uh, help the patient from the pain as well as initial treatment at or was it is one medicine we give in most of the heart patient, heart attack patients the first thing when heart attack has been diagnosed or you are having a suspicion that probably you are undergoing heart attack first thing is cool the mouth mind this is very difficult but no doubt it is the important part we should not get panic yes there is something wrong we have to reach to the center or the heart uh, heart specialist and get it treated reduce the physical activity sometime patient start jumping they start walking here and there that is the time you have to restrict your physical movement so if you are feeling that you are have developing heart attack take the support from your spouse sister brother or whoever is available in the family and say that they can transport you to the nearest center without hiding their symptom or without underestimating that if you are moving too much you are straining the already choked artery and it will be detrimental it will be dangerous it will be uh, fatal also second reach to the hospital as early as possible so when you are feeling never neglect that tomorrow morning i will go or i will go later on when it is going to increase better the early you go and start the treatment and it is better to plan nearby center which is reachable within 1 hour because this is the 1 hour the first hour we call as a golden hour in this both the primary pcis and thrombolysis both are having a good response and if you are reaching it may be possible that one thrombolysis is enough to treat you and never chase the center or the cardiologist where you have be treated if it is very far so in this situation it is not essential that you have to reach to the same cardiologist who was treating it may possible he may be very far and it may take more time and traffic so better to avoid whichever near center is there or which you have you have planned earlier it is better to go and and get it confirmed and treated ecg is the most important tool and there are some changes which will directly guide you or even the the technicians who are available who are uh, routinely they will give you some information and sometime the even the ecg gives the reading also so chest pain most of the time the electronically developed reports sometime give that myocardial infarction mi it will be coming and you can say these are three patterns if you want the here you have to concentrate and these are the st elevation so this st elevations with tv inversion is very classical of heart attack now thrombolysis versus primary angioplasty 
so there are two options are there either you can give one medicines by dissolving and this can be directly pushed in the venous system reach to the heart open the clogged vessel and your chest pain is relieved but this medicine is be wonderful if you are reaching within the first 60 minute where the thrombolysis is very effective but after the time it is going the thrum the thrombus is getting stabilized and if you are even you are going to give a clot dissolving medicine it may not work the most dependable way to open the artery is primary angioplasty and that's why i was saying wherever possible try to avail it without wasting the time and probably your doctor will doctor team will cardiologist team will do the best they will just do take a catheter put the dye visualize the block and just put a stent so i can show one patient who has come with a uh, for the chest pain we did the angiography and you can see there is a block so this is the block which we have to open because this should be there is a major artery which has been totally blocked with a clot and we have seen all the vessels all vessels are normal and finally uh, we put the bell, uh, balloon to open this and after ballooning the circulation has regained and we have fixed this the blocked area with a stent so that it should not get reoculated and the whole the process is completed within 10 to 15 minutes and the patient is pain free and later on he has been so you can see this is a block this block wire has been uh, passed with a, a wire and ballooning and after ballooning this is the stenting so this is called primary angioplasty and this is the one of the life-saving procedure and this is stenting versus the routine stenting what we do in the coronary artery disease which is a chance findings for which we do so this is an emergency and here the decision taking is very very important without wasting time we should opt it course of of the disease after this heart attack so we have to do the thrombolysis the first four five days are the time uh, there is a mechanical complication happens so it we have to be visual uh, we have to be uh, factful about those things we have uh, we should know the electrical complication happen regarding the stent life yes stent is for the life and it saved the life so and we have to be uh, be uh, we should be knowing that re-attack can happen and it's a lifelong disease so you have to be on the medicines so these are the stents and these are the things which has now in the coronaries and these coronaries will be so coming to the hospital course, so hospitalized patient pain has been relieved usually 24 out of 48 hours we keep in the hospital and the reason is that the patient can develop the mechanical complication means there is a rupture of the uh, one of the chamber that may lead to uh, again the chest pain increase and sometimes shock also. There may be some electrical problem depending upon the type of heart attack. It may be very fast heart rate, very slow heart rate inflammatory so sometimes the inflammation the pain will again reappear and it is not due to the heart attack but it is due to the the layer of the heart which we call as a pericardium which is getting inflamed and sometimes the reinfarction can happen sometimes the thrombus form in the chamber which embolizes leading to stroke also so these are the complications for which we observe the patient longer the patient lo uh, longer from the uh, myocardial infarction it happened lower the complications rate will be Life after heart attack, so there are some medication will be there. You will undergo ECG, echo, and blood tests for the evaluation. How you are doing? How is your blood parameters? There will be some modification, and the most important is the bring the dice and discipline in the life. You have to have a work bal a work and life balance. You should have a disciplined food and local pain at the site when after angioplasty. No chest discomfort mostly after the pain. So initially, first few months you will be having a lot of medicine. As the time passes, you will be reduced with the medicines. The first important thing is work and life balance that we have to do. Sometimes we are more workaholic and breaking the rule of the nature, and then we bring this type of problem due to the stress also. So we have to balance it. Regarding food, a lot of questions comes what we should take. All Indian foods are good, but the most important thing is what type of what is energy in and energy energy that should be balanced. So your caloric intake should be good. Whenever you are taking too much oily food, it brings a lot of calories and these calories will be responsible for more uh, cardiac issues in the long term. So avoid as much as possible. Eat less, eat everything. Life after heart attack is tempting. You can do everything, walking, jogging, cycling, running, even the normal marital life and gym and yoga. We should know that within six to six weeks to three months is the time in which most of the healing is over. The stent is already been 
uh, what you call accentuate uh, actualized in the coronary arteries and this is the time that we can again regain whatever we are doing but we should go slow and over the time regarding marital life everybody is saying after stenting when we have to start usually uh, uh, I will say that you can regain within two to four weeks most of the time all the uh, activity what you are doing everything can be done preparation for heart attack and myocardial infarction so the most important thing you have to make a checklist anybody can develop heart attack in the family heart attack is something like a medical emergency or it can be say as an accident so as you make a first aid the same thing you have to make at home also if somebody develop what you are going to do and the most important thing is the phone numbers phone numbers of the family member who is going to be first contacted so that he can provide the support second thing some medicines should be available that the aspirin sorbitate that that should be available and that should be given whenever possible not to mobilize the patient so immobilize means you should reduce the activity transportation number should be there so that you can transport the patient to the hospital nearby because a lot of time the patient develops some arrhythmic issues and ambulance are equipped with some defibrillation that will help and they will save the life last prescription or procedure note if it has been done you should keep always ready and keep it separately so that you have not to search at the time of emergency and as you know emergency or problem never comes singular it is always plural so as much as thing you can provide early it will be better and always and always nearby hospital you should want never ever waste the time to reach to the hospital which is very distance where your doctor is sitting it is the cath lab team and the cardiologist at the particular nearby hospital that may deliver better than wasting the time in the transportation to a far center and losing the patient either in the way or reaching to the center so i will suggest you plan your center depending upon your locality so radius of the hospital you should see which hospital is nearby where you are staying chalk out see the facilities whatever what is the insurance facility and how is the around the clock cardiology is there or not these are the three important information you should keep and make one or two center which you feel that is doing well in your locality and have the number of the ambulance if they can provide or you should have your own ambulance number so that you can contact and reach to the hospital and keep ready in your house also these three medicines whenever possible and the bp instrument because it guides a lot if the blood pressure is dropping it is a medical emergency so without wasting time you should reach to the nearby center so thank you so much for watching next time we will be meeting with some new topic and i will suggest you that you should keep all this information keep sharing with the people who are having heart diseases or the family already have heart attack certainly this information will help them to uh, and as well as guide them for the further emergencies thank you so much see you next time So this information may have helped you and next time we will meet with some new topics. See you next time.